Krista Rose. So, Krista Rose has been an international leader in the animal rights movement for 35 years. Chris has been shot, jailed, and called a terrorist for trying to make a difference for animals in the world. In 1984, he founded Last Chance for Animals, where he has carried out groundbreaking investigations that have resulted in prison sentences for those responsible of some of the worst cases of animal cruelty to ever be investigated in the United States. In fact, the Emmy-nominated HBO documentary, Dealing Dogs, profiles Last Chance for Animals' undercover investigation into the world of pet theft. In 1997, Chris released his autobiography, In Your Face, and his work earned him the prestigious Courage of Conscience International Peace Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris DeRose. If you hear me slurring, I haven't been drinking, I just got a migraine, so there's a little difference. Uh, maybe the drink would help right now. Uh, 35 years ago, there was no animal rights movement. There was nothing. It was just a handful of people, basically, Dr. Michael Clapper, a few others who really spoke up for the animals. But there were people, there were some of us that cared and we knew that we had to make a difference. And in the beginning, I think one of the major things and one of the identities of the animal rights movement has been a little monkey called Britches. And Britches, oh, well, go back. Who's got the remote? Oh, you got it. Okay, we'll go back to the uh, uh, Britches. Okay, this here shot is Dr. Les Stewart, myself, and his wife. We, were, uh, we got sentenced to prison. So that was... Um, we got 90 days in a uh, solitary confinement, and then 45 days after that in a hole. So uh, th that was the beginning of the civil disobedience. But prior to that, we had uh, Bridges, who was liberated by the Animal Liberation Front, and I had uh, made sure that the information was disseminated to the above-ground groups properly from the underground. Uh, as most of you know, uh, the picture on the left of Bridges is, what, is how he looked inside the facility at UC Riverside, one of the most prominent facilities uh, around, so-called. On the right, you see him uh, about two months later, how he looked, and that's him on the right. And he lived uh, to be about 18 or 19 years old. And the fact that the vivisectors would have the nerve to say that this monkey was in worse hands than he was uh, when he was inside the research facility because that device on top of his head was sending pulses and noises, screeching noises, 24-7. Uh, and, that, and that monkey, if anybody ever saw the, um, the video, you'll see how nervous he is and he twitches, his nerves were shot. Um, so anyway, Bridges was liberated and that was the beginning, really the beginning of the animal rights movement and that was thanks to the uh, Animal Liberation Front. Um, <laughs> From there, from there, we moved on to doing civil disobedience, and there was a lot of different activities that took place. Um, this is Green Hill in Italy, where over 1,200 beagles were liberated. And just shortly after that, 5,000 people demonstrating in the streets of Rome uh, uh, against the uh, treatment of the animals inside this facility. It was absolutely horrendous. Another facility was uh, UCLA Brain Research Institute. Uh, we don't have a shot up here of it, but it's, uh, many of you may have seen it back in 1988 where Last Chance Round was broken in the front doors of the vivarium with a TV camera crew in broad daylight, them knowing that we're going to be there because we were there for two years in a row prior to that. And they, we showed, they, they had a press conference saying that these are our animals. You can see we don't, we don't torture them. We treat them very well. Shortly after that, we broke in and we showed the world the truth. The CNN covered this. It went all around the world. And it showed that the animals had the electrodes in their brains, the cats, electrodes in their spines. And, that, and again, that was the beginning of it. Next. Next. 
Uh, puppy mills. Uh, we have been uh, doing a lot of investigations as well as other groups into the puppy mills and exposing. People didn't know what puppy mills were 35 years ago, 30 years ago. Nobody really knew what they were. Factory farms, nobody knew what factory farms were. Nobody knew what was going on inside of laboratories. But the movement is progressing and it's getting better and better. This, I, I only dreamed of one day would happen. I really, it's been 35 years, but it's happening. We're becoming more savvy. We're becoming more understanding of how to deal with the media, how to deal with uh, law enforcement, how to deal with the public, and how to deal with the opposition. We are making grounds, and we are making them fast. We need to keep working together, and we need to not point fingers at other people in the movement. We need to keep staying together and working together and going in the direction of helping the animals. A very good example of working together, and, uh, and well, Mexico City just banned uh, circus animals, as we, we just heard, but also, more importantly, in China, we have a, uh, a major, major victory in China, and that was three, uh, three groups working together. That was LCA, uh, Animal Equality from Europe, and a small uh, group from China, all working together to show you how something can be done and we closed down 33 markets, one major slaughterhouse, and that equals to 1.5 million dogs and cats every year that are saved that will not have to die horribly. We have been working very closely with Australia, at Animals Australia, for the Ban Live Animal Export. When I saw the videos down there, I said, something's got to be done. This is horrendous. And we can't just go on year after year, stand out there, hold a cardboard sign, and let this atrocity going on go on with these uh, farm animals. Absolutely some of the most horrendous footage I've ever seen. And uh, so I, I said, who, there's got to be one person, one person who can make this change. And who is the most powerful man in Australia? And it, really what we needed to do is get to the media. So I said, who's the most powerful man in the media? Rupert Murdoch. I contacted Rupert Murdoch myself. I had a meeting with him this close, twice, and he gave me, uh, gave me his word. We could get nine, we did nine op-eds. We used the, uh, his best uh, venues of media, electronic and print media in Australia. And we were able to say what we wanted to say in the op-eds about what's happening with the live export in Australia. So it works. So all I could say to you is stay united, stay a movement, be smart, be focused, be creative, and be successful. Thank you.